Come on, come on, come on. Right over here, guys. It's huge. Oh my gosh, look at the size of that thing. Wow. Can I pick it up? You can't. Whoa, look at that. Whoa. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh, is it slimy. If there is one ecosystem on the planet that is constantly changing, it has to be the tide pools. With every single rising and falling of the tide, new waves crash upon the rocks and alter the placement of plants and animals. Along the coast of California, there are a slew of creatures that you can find if you know exactly where to look. Got a little striped crab right here. Oh, got it. There's definitely no shortage of crabs out here in these tide pools. However, Navigating this terrain can be difficult because most of the rocks are wet and slippery. One of the toughest things so far for me in filming beyond the tide has been the terrain. You know, I'm used to swamps and deserts. Everything here is rocky and slippery. It's all covered in a layer of, I guess it's some sort of algae, and using a lot of eye-foot coordination because I'm looking for creatures and every step I take, your foot might slip off of something and these rocks are extremely jagged. Really easy to get hurt out here. And I'm sure for you, Mark, it's even more difficult. Right now you're balancing on these rocks just trying to get the shots. Yep. I'm sure everybody at home. <laughs> it isn't easy, is it? Nope. <laughs> All right, well, let's keep going this way and see what we can find. Watch your footing. Oh, yep, see, there you go. I'm usually pretty good at finding animals in the field, but sometimes a wildlife expert joins us to help locate the species that can be very difficult to find. Today I'm back out with tide pool expert Aaron Sanchez, who has been exploring these Southern California pools his entire life. And our goal is to locate a giant sea slug. All right, Aaron, so we're here at the tide pools and we're looking for slugs. What should I be keeping my eye out for? Well, Cody, these slugs are gonna be pretty hard to miss. They're actually the largest sea slug on the planet. They come to these rocky shores here to mate and lay their eggs. Okay, now when you say the largest, do you mean like five to six inches in length, or are we talking bigger? We're talking probably almost a little bit less than three feet. A three foot slug? So it's gonna be pretty hard to miss. Yeah. All right, well, let's start searching. The search was on, and I was confident that I could come across one of these giants. I mean, if they're as big as Aaron says they are, spotting one should be simple, right? Hi, well, we've been searching for about 45 minutes now through all these layered rocks. I don't know, Heron said it was gonna be easy. Nothing yet. We continued to search over jagged outcrops, in crevices, through knee deep pools, and even under rocks. I'd say the odds of finding one of these slugs are slim to none. Tides are coming in. Yeah, it's coming in big time, and all I've seen is crabs, crabs, crabs. Hermit crabs, striped crabs, purple shore crabs, no giant slugs. With the tide starting to come back in, it was looking like our search for the giant sea slug was coming to an end. But if anyone knows how to find a sea creature, it's definitely Aaron. Searching, searching. No big slugs. Yeah! Oh, you got one? Come on, come on, come on. Right over here, guys. It's huge. Oh my gosh, look at the size of that thing. Wow, dude. Oh, Yes! Well, that was one heck of a search. And there it is. Can I pick it up? You can't. It's totally safe. And it's not gonna ink me. It might be a little slimy, but that's it. Whoa, look at that. Whoa. Right, here we go. Oh my gosh, is it slimy. Oh, look at that slug. Oh my gosh, it is heavy. Jeez, this thing must be about almost 10 pounds, I would guess. Is that a big one, Aaron? Oh, it's a pretty good size, yeah. It's one of the bigger ones I've seen. Wow. I'm gonna let it stretch out of my arm, see if we can get it to fully elongate itself. Oh my gosh, it is so slimy. All right, now tell us about this slug, Aaron. Well, Coyote, what he's wrapping around your arm right now is actually his muscular foot he uses that to get around. I can feel him gripping onto my arm. I mean, I can feel him actually like wrapping around me and I can feel his little tongue under there. He can't bite, right? No, these guys are vegetarians. They mostly eat algae and kelp. And it does have an internal shell, correct? Where um, it has all of its organs? It does have an internal shell. It's kind of soft and made of protein. Okay. And that is actually what these extensions of its foot called parapodia are protecting. 
I can see why there's no way you would miss stumbling upon one of these. I have to admit, I was just over there talking to Mark. I literally said, I'm really doubting our chances of finding <laughs> one of these slugs. All we've seen all day is crabs and smaller little brown sea hares. Which, by the way, we should grab one of those. Isn't there one over here? Let's see him next to each other. Yeah. All right, you got one of those brown sea hares? Okay, so this is, this is cool, showing the comparison of the giant black sea slug next to the much smaller brown sea slug. And they're both called sea hares, because as you can see, those tentacles sticking up in the air, in the front of the head, look like rabbit's ears. I thought the brown sea hare was big. <laughs> yeah, seriously, there is no mistaking the difference between these two species. Wow, that thing is absolutely massive. It weighs about 10 pounds, and fully stretched out, it's about two feet in length. That is crazy, and it is so unbelievably slippery. It's actually really hard to hold on to it, and my hands and arms right now are covered in a slippery mucus. Now, are they toxic in any way? No, they're not. Okay, so I'm in no danger right now. So they don't bite, they're not toxic, they're just slimy and alien looking. So how do these defend themselves against predators? Well, you know, these guys don't have as many predators as the California sea hare, probably due to their size. Okay. So they would generally just kind of stick to where they are, and they're going to be pretty well hidden in these rocks. I can't even imagine what would want to try to eat this. And it's just so amazing how big this slug is. When you said to me, yeah, we're going to go out and we're going to catch a giant slug, I honestly didn't believe you when you said they could grow to be about two feet in length. And until I actually had this animal in my hand, really on my arm, I didn't believe it. This is absolutely amazing. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for having us out today to explore the tide pools here in San Pedro. I think there's no question about it. This is one big black slug. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. We gently placed these two slimy slugs back into their respective pools and watched as they slowly return to the wild. I think it's fair to say that these creatures are as primordial as it gets. And while they may be incredibly bizarre looking, they are an important part of the tide pool ecosystem. Make sure to check out some of Aaron's tide pool photography by visiting his Instagram account at waterbod or his website waterbodymedia.com. If you thought this adventure was exciting, make sure to go back and watch my close encounter with the yellow-bellied sea snake. And don't forget, subscribe to the Brave Wilderness channel so you can join me and the crew on this season of Beyond the Tide. There's no question about it, this is the most lethal snake species I have ever handled.